Atheist Republic, what is your opinion on the Persian influence of India and the inferiority complex of Indian Muslims and them claiming to be Arabs? Hmm. hmm. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's weird because it's either Arab or Persian, right? So they have this idea. It's interesting because the Persians <laughs> all have their own inferiority complex, right? So I don't know why so many people in the subcontinent want to act like they're Arabs or Persian because they see their own ethnicity as inferior. Or Turks. And they, Turks sometimes. Yeah. But then the Persians, they see themselves as inferior to Europeans, so they have their own. <laughs> On your, and the Arabs also have their own inferiority complex, right? Um, yeah, it's and it's interesting to Persians because you know Persians is, they have this. They met a lot of Persians have this have both an inferiority complex and a superiority complex, right? So they clearly like a lot of them see themselves as superior to Arabs and. Um, you know the ethnicity of sub the subcontinent, like like the Indians and Pakistanis, like they see themselves as superior to that, right? But they they when it comes to the hierarchy, they see themselves as below Caucasians, right? They might not say it, they might not admit it, but they act like it, right? Like they don't they see themselves like for example, if you go to a Persian and you mistake them with an Arab, you're likely to get you're likely to see them getting extremely butthurt, okay? Again, I'm not generalizing. I'm just saying likelihood, okay? But if you say like, hey, you look Spanish, you know? Do you have some, are you Spanish? Then you get, you see them get very, they feel like, they, they just feel like they got a compliment, right? If you, if you tell a Persian person that they look like, are they Arabic? They get offended. If you tell them that they look Spanish, they get very pleasant, you know, they get, they get very happy and pleasant with you, right? Um, so the idea of some people wanting to claim that they're Arab to be superior to the race that they already have, it would be far uh, to the reason I grew up in that environment. I grew up in an environment where I saw the Persian ethnicity to become, to be extremely superior to an Arab ethnicity, right? So that's why it's a very foreign concept to me for some people to pretend to be Arab. Like, look how actually look how much the racism has been somewhat internal. You can see that how it, I, I'm still affected by it, right? To be like, wait, if you want to pretend to be superior, why would you would go with Arab instead of Persian? Like, <laughs> oh, <you> no! <laughs> You can see that I'm a product of an environment <laughs> that oh is extremely racist. <laughs> you... <laughs> I'm ending the show here. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, no, I'm acknowledging that this is some dark stuff that is a product of the environment that I was born in. That is, is a far, there's a foreign idea to me that somebody wants to be Arab to deal with their inferiority conflict. Like, it shows that how, no matter how much you fight against racism, um, there are some parts of this whole brainwashing that is so ingrained inside your psyche that it will it just stay there. Like no matter how much you try to wash it off, you still hear some things and you're like, what? Right? So it's very disgusting, right? I'm just admitting that you can't, it seems like you can't get rid of it. Um, I think there's a whole bunch of colorism that is, is working parallel to the race superiority right like i think like a lot of this the idea i mean arabs for example are lighter right than than a lot of people in the subcontinent right and i think like that is how they identify who is the superior race and who is not the superior race right i mean i think a lot of westerners have this idea of the idea of a race being invented because of the North Atlantic s slave trade and skin color just played into that, those modern definitions of what races are, right? But I think colorism predates that, okay? You could even read in the Hadith, in the Islamic Hadith, uh, talking about people's dark skin as uh, to dismiss them as inferior 
and describing people with lighter skin as superior right this is a, right and you could even see like in the indian caste system in very very ancient texts describing different castes skin color right talking about lower caste people as darker and uh, upper caste people as as lighter right so this whole colorism in a way that is tied to heretical traits is something that predates like the form of slavery that was the, the form of racism that was invented by the slave the north atlantic slave trade right and i think like for example if you see the way that the indian the people from the indian subcontinent are treated when they go to arab countries right um, either as modern day slaves um, or just tourists or just like for the hajj or something like that right how are they how when they are mistreated the only way they are unidentified is their darkest skin color right um so you can see that how bad of an experience a lot of pakistanis or indians or bangladeshis have in arabic countries you know how they're treated as like inferior because of their darker skin color right so i think like one reason why a lot of people want to associate with arabs is because they're generally lighter, right? What do you think? Um, yeah, that's, um, I know that that plays a really big role in things in places like Qatar, where there's a lot of um, immigrant labor. Um, yeah, I, I'm, it's not something I'm super familiar with, but I know that it's something that um, African Muslims experience a lot, or um, yeah. not even African Muslims, but Muslims like in Saudi that have African heritage of which there are a ton um, experience a lot of those issues in that area as well. So th there's also similarly a lot of affiliation with an Arab identity that may be somewhat ahistoric for some populations, which are in the African continent as well, which I think is very interesting. So, okay. The, the liberal who, who's, used to be Hindutva, <laughs> saying no arm and color was in caste. I, I didn't say color is caste, okay? I said that within um, Hindu scripture, right, very old Hindu scripture, you see descriptions of different caste skin color, which shows how ancient colorism is, right? It's, And I think, like, people are not surprised that it's not the other way around, that the lower castes are described as dark, the lower castes are described as darker, right? Higher castes are described as different skin colors, right? I think, like, if I didn't even tell you what the order goes, people would have guessed that. People wouldn't have guessed that the lower caste or the outcasts are described as lighter skin color. You know, nobody would have predicted that, and there's a good reason for it, right? Right. <laughs> I'm laughing. Because... Oh my God! Look at this. You say no, you are wrong. No description of skin color. This is how I know that I understand Hinduism more than a lot of Hindus. Okay, like people are like, oh, Armin, why are you talking about Hinduism? You're not a Hindu. You don't understand Hinduism. I understand it apparently. I understand. I know Hindu scripture more than most Hindus because when the Hindus come and try to defend Hinduism, they don't know their own scripture. I know this. I know the scripture exists. Okay. So this is why you, you can't keep you can't criticize me for like oh why are you talking about hinduism why are you not talking to a hindu well because i know it better than hindus most hindus okay <laughs> i know that this scripture exists i'm laughing because gossam was making uh jokes about the the persian empire and then and then he got himself in trouble in live chat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. about the, the power of the persian empire <laughs> they were like yeah, oh no kidding. Yeah, that's <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.